Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. Uh, welcome to Hebrew Readers Church. Uh, hope you all are enjoying the Shabbat today. I'm your brother, Kasafo. We are thankful to spend this time with you all. Uh, today we'll be going over the tribe of Asher. Let's get into it here. The ten tribes predominantly went to the regions of Asher, which were the islands of the Indian Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Americas, and Caribbean. They are known as the aboriginals, indigenous, or natives of those lands and islands. Today, the ten tribes are scattered across the world presently. So, they are not regulated to being in one specific area of the world right now. The ten tribes consist of Reuben, Simeon, Dan, Naphtali, Asher, Gad, Issachar, Zebulon, Ephraim, and Manasseh. In one's personal search for one's tribal origin, one must start by prayer because we have to make our requests known with supplication. Then one has to look at our father's lineage to know our tribes according to the scriptures, like Numbers chapter 1, verse 2. If one's ancestry stems back to the slaves, the Negroes, the Bantus of Africa, or the cargo slave ships, then one is more than likely from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, or Levi, with a slim chance of Simeon or the Ten Tribes. On the other hand, if one's ancestry stems back to any Native American, indigenous people of the Americas and Caribbean, or aboriginals and indigenous tribes of the Indian and Pacific Ocean, then you are more than likely from the Ten Tribes of Israel. This series of lessons are to identify the 12 tribes individually according to the spiritual indicators that the patriarchs documented their children would face. And we know the signs and curses that help identify the children of Israel around the world today. Yet through the spiritual indicators in the admonitions of the patriarchs, one can identify which specific tribe a person of the house of Israel originates from. It is by the Spirit Ahai has given the grace to truly identify which tribe people actually come from, since it is she that brings things to remembrance, searcheth all things, and we cannot know anything except the Spirit reveal them. And you can reference John chapter 16, verse 13 and 14 and 26, and also 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, for understanding of how it's the Spirit that's bringing the understanding and helping the tribes to remember who they are. All right? Going into the tribe of Asher. Jacob attested of the blessings of Asher in the last days. In Genesis chapter 49, Out of Asher his bread shall be fat, and he shall yield royal dainties. Asher would have abundance. In the regions of Asher, where the ten tribes went, South America yields royal dainties and abundance of bread above the other places in Asher. South America is known to produce gems. Brazil and Colombia stand out as two countries that produce amazing gemstones. That you can find some of the finest gem types, which include emerald, diamond, aquamarine, quartz, amethyst, sapphire, citrine, topaz, ruby, and many others. Also, many crops thrive in the tropical climates of South America. For example, Cashews and Brazil nuts, avocado, pineapple, papaya, and guava are native fruits among others in South America. Also coffee and cacao, which is the prime ingredient in chocolate, are cash crops in South America. Hence, though the children of Israel are scattered throughout the earth and the ten tribes are amongst each other, predominantly you can find the children of Asher in South America. Moses also spake of the blessings that Ahiah would bestow upon Asher as well. And in Deuteronomy chapter 33, verses 24 and 25, he speaks of these things. And of Asher he said, Let Asher be blessed with children. Asher's tribe will almost be wiped out, but he's going to be blessed with children in the kingdom. Continuing reading. Let him be acceptable to his brethren. This means let him be delightful to his brethren. When they convert, they will be a delight to the family. Continuing. And let him dip his foot in oil. South America is known to have the most oil reserves in the region of Asher to understand where the children of Asher can predominantly be found. Venezuela and Brazil dominate oil production in that region. And verse 25. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. South American countries are known to be some of the top producers of precious metals. 
Brazil being one of the leading iron ore producers, while Chile is one of the world's largest brass copper producers in the world. Other countries in South America are rich in natural resources as well. Hopefully this helps understand asteroids can be found in South America predominantly where there is an abundance of food, royal dainties, plenty oil, and iron and brass. Yet they are also spread throughout the world as prophecy states. Continuing reading. And as thy days, so shall thy strength be. When they get older, they are still strong and working and whatnot. Their bodies are preserved by Allah Ham's word. Of course, I can't speak for those with evil spirits killing them. Jumping into the Testament of Asha, chapter 1. The copy of the Testament of Asha, what things he spake to his sons in the hundred and twenty-third year of his life. For while he was still in health, he said to them, Hearken ye children of Asha to your father, and I will declare to you all that is upright in the sight of Ahaya. It's important for the children of Asha to know what's right in the sight of Allah Hayyam. To overcome their struggles in these times. So continuing in the Testament of Asha here, chapter 1, verse 3. Two ways are Allah Hayyam given to the sons of men, and two inclinations, and two kinds of actions, and two modes of action, and two issues. Therefore, all things are by twos, one over against the other. For there are two ways of good, and evil, and with these there are the two inclinations in our breasts discriminating them. Your father is focusing on this because this is key for you to grasp what's going on within your mind for you to overcome. How to discern things according to righteousness. Therefore, if the soul takes pleasure in the good inclination, all its actions are in righteousness. And if it sin, it straightway repenteth, for having its thoughts set upon righteousness and casting away wickedness, it straightway overcometh the evil and uprooteth the sin. So there you have the mindset of the righteous who has the good inclination. Therefore, though he may fall, you see how he overcomes the evil because repentance is quick and he sets his mind towards righteous. Now, to understand how he cast away the wickedness, he repents quickly and doesn't sorrow much over the sin, but accepts his fault and moves forward and his mind being set on righteousness. He focuses mentally on what's the right thing to do. That's how he breaks the bands of wickedness, casting away that evil spirit that caused him to fall. And so that's admonition for you children of Asha. And it's essential for you to have this good inclination walking in this mindset to overcome what you're facing. Now he gives the other mindset that can lead one astray. And sadly, the children of Asher can be found walking in this mindset today. Continuing in chapter 1 verse 8. But if it incline to the evil inclination, all its actions are in wickedness. And it driveth away the good, and cleaveth to the evil, and is ruled by Belier. Even though it work what is good, he perverteth it to evil. For whenever it beginneth to do good, he forceth the issue of the action into evil for him, seeing that the treasure of the inclination is filled with an evil spirit. The children of Asher struggle with the evil inclination, hearkening to evil spirits to do wicked actions being ruled by Belier. And from what Asher explains, it looks like they're prone to getting involved in gang activity. Now let's look at it in chapter 2. A person then may with words help the good for the sake of evil, yet the issue of the action leadeth to mischief. In layman's terms, the children of Asher speak words to help people in guile or deceit for some mischief they have planned, setting people up. Continuing. There is a man who showeth no compassion upon him who serveth his turn in evil. They struggle with showing compassion on the tough time another is going through for their faults. Continuing reading. And this thing hath two aspects, but the whole is evil. It's true. A person is deserving of evil for sinning, but it's also evil not to have compassion on another human being that is susceptible to falling just like oneself. Hence, the whole work is evil. Continuing reading. There is a man that loveth him that worketh evil. 
They love evil doers like themselves, just as Sirach 13 and 16 says, Every man cleaveth to his like. Hence they gang up with like-minded folks and love their own. You will find the children of Asher are respect of persons, holding in admiration those that work evil, and among them, the more evil you do, the more respect you gain. And they'll love you for it, for the following reasons. Because he would prefer even to die in evil for his sake. When they click up in love for the evildoer, they die for one another in evil deeds. In the gang environment, this is being right or die for one another. And concerning this, it is clear that it hath two aspects, but the whole is an evil work. Though indeed he have love, yet is he wicked who concealeth what is evil for the sake of the good name. But the end of the action tendeth unto evil. In the love for one another, they'll conceal each other's evil deeds for the sake of a good name amongst themselves, so as not to have the bad name as a snitch amongst themselves. This is similar to what the Benjamites did in Judges 19. Such evil deeds they commit are as follows. Another stealeth, and doeth unjustly, plundereth, defraudeth, and withal pitieth the poor. This too hath a twofold aspect, but the whole is evil. These are the type of acts Asherites commit. We know South America is known for gang issues, and from what the scriptures explain, Asherites are involved in it. They are known for robbing, stealing, extortion, kidnapping, and etc., while showing mercy to a few at the same time. They struggle with self-righteousness, doing good to few while doing harm to many. Their father Asher is helping them change their mindset and mode of action by explaining what you're doing is in upright in the sight of Allah Hayyam. He who defraudeth his neighbor provoketh Allah Hayyam and sweareth falsely against the Most High, and yet pitieth the poor. Ahayah who commandeth the law, he setteth at naught, and provoketh, and yet he refresheth the poor. He defileth the soul, and maketh gay the body. In chapter 4 verse 4 he explained that this is from riotous parties and fornication, and this shows they also struggle with same kind relations. Even if only within the mind, continuing reading, he killeth many, and pitieth few. This too hath a twofold aspect, but the whole is evil. This shows they can be killers too. If not outwardly, they're troubled by their evil thoughts. Who among the evils they are doing, hence the murder rate is so high in South America. They still show pity to few, so they show with being lukewarm, doing some good and evil at the same time, in a false sense of righteousness. Continuing reading. Another committeth adultery and fornication, and abstaineth from meats, and when he fasteth he doeth evil, and by the power of his wealth he overwhelmeth many, and notwithstanding his excessive wickedness he doeth the commandments. This too hath a twofold aspect, but the whole is evil. Again an example of being lukewarm. In both good works and evil works. He goes on to say, Such men are hares clean, like those that divide the hoof, but in very deed are unclean. For Allah in the tables of the commandments have thus declared. These are examples of being lukewarm and two-faced, which the children of Asha struggle with. Your father doesn't want you to be this way. Now he's going into his admonitions to keep you from falling into that. But do not ye, my children, wear two faces like unto them, of goodness and of wickedness, but cleave unto goodness only. For Allah hath his habitation therein, and men desire it. That's the reason he doesn't want you to be two faced, so that Allah may dwell with you when you cleave to goodness only and hearken to the angel of righteousness. And you can read about the angel of righteousness in the Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 6. And that book is on the website. But from wickedness flee away, destroying the evil inclination by your good works. Your cure is to strive in good works without giving up by repenting quickly if you fall in the process, keeping your mindset set to do good and hearken to the angel of righteousness and cleave to the good desire found in Hermas Mandate 12. This will destroy the evil inclination. The things that the Angel of Righteousness speaks are as follows in Shepherd of Hermas, 
Mandate 6, chapter 2, verse 3. Here saith he, and understand their workings. The angel of righteousness is delicate, and bashful, and gentle, and tranquil. When then this one enters into thy heart, forthwith he speaketh with thee of righteousness, of purity, of holiness, and of contentment, of every righteous deed, and of every glorious virtue. When all these things enter into thy heart, know that the angel of righteousness is with thee. These then are the works of the angel of righteousness. Trust him, therefore, and his works. Now, also, the good desire is as follows. Shepherd of Hermas, Mandate 12, chapter 3, verse 1. I would fain know, sir, say I, in what way I ought to serve the good desire. Listen, saith he, practice righteousness and virtue, truth and the fear of the Lord, faith and gentleness, and as many good deeds as are like these. Practicing these, thou shalt be well pleasing as a servant of Allah, and shalt live unto him. Yea, and every one who shall serve the good desire shall live unto Allah. These are the works to do to overcome the evil inclination and be single-faced. Continuing in Testament of Asha, chapter 3, verse 2. For they that are double-faced serve not Allah, but their own lusts, so that they may please Belia and men like unto themselves. As was stated before, the children of Asha are men-pleasers, doing evil to please those that are evil like themselves. In the gangs, you will find them doing wicked actions to prove themselves to those they hold in admiration and evil works that please Belia. Now Asher, knowing his children will be respect of evil persons and men pleasers of the same, he guides on what a good man really is for them to become such. Continuing reading in Testament of Asher, chapter 4, verse 1. Right, for good men, even they that are of a single face, though they be thought by them that are double faced to sin, are just before Allah Hayyam. So being one that's focused on what's upright and just before Allah Hayyam will help you overcome the respect of persons and men pleasing because you'll be concerned only with not sinning in his sight though two-faced men would see you as a sinner but Allah Hayyam seeth the inner man and the works of the heart with patience. Continuing reading. For good men are even they that are of a single face, though they be thought by them that are double faced to sin, are just before Allah. Hayyam. For many, in killing the wicked, do two works of good and evil, but the whole is good because he hath uprooted and destroyed that which is evil. Let's say you kill somebody in self defense. The evil is you kill somebody which is frowned upon in the sight of Allah Hayyam, because he has no pleasure in the death of him that dieth. Yet, when weighed in the balance, the work is actually good as a whole because he uprooted and destroyed the evil. So you can see how you learn to weigh things righteously and true so that you can always do what is pleasing and just before Allah Hayyam, as opposed to what may seem right in the sight of men. Seeing Asher is in the environment with all the wickedness going on around, they have to defend themselves and Asher is explaining how self-defense is right in the sight of Allah Hayyam. So they'll be comforted to know they're not wrong for standing up for themselves and protecting their life if they have to take the life of another to do that. He, there's another example he gives. One man hateth the merciful and unjust man, and the man who committeth adultery and fasteth. This too hath a twofold aspect, but the whole work is good because he followeth Ahaya's example in that he accepted not the seeming good as the genuine good. These things will help the children of Asher have a holy mindset, looking at things according to the good inclination, as Allah Hayyam having respect unto the genuine good, and no longer being respect of persons or lovers of the evildoers. Now, of course we have to have compassion for all, even showing mercy to all men, though they may be sinners, as men of a good mind. For understanding of the good man. Let's look at Testament of Benjamin, chapter 4, verse 1 to 4. See ye therefore, my children, the end of the good man. Be ye followers of his compassion, therefore, with a good mind, that ye also may wear crowns of glory. For the good man hath not a dark eye, for he showeth mercy to all men, even though they be sinners. 
And though they devise with evil intent concerning him, by doing good he overcometh evil, being shielded by Allah. And he loveth the righteous as his own soul. Chapter 5, verse 1. If, therefore, ye also have a good mind, then will both wicked men be at peace with you, and the profligate will reverence you, and turn unto good. And the covetous will not only cease from their inordinate desire, but even give the objects of their covetousness to them that are afflicted. If ye do well, even the unclean spirits will flee from you, and the beasts will dread you. For where there is reverence for good works in light of the mind, even darkness fleeth away from him. For if any one does violence to a holy man, he repenteth. For the holy man is merciful to his reviler, and holdeth his peace. And if any one betrayeth a righteous man, the righteous man prayeth. Though for a little he be humbled, yet not long after he appeareth far more glorious, as was Joseph my brother. Chapter 6, verse 1. The inclination of the good man is not in the power of the seat of the spirits of Belier, for the angel of peace guideth his soul. That's the angel that the children of Asher need guidance from, so becoming this good man will help. Continuing reading, And he gazeth not passionately upon corruptible things, nor gathereth together riches through a desire of pleasure. He delighteth not in pleasure. He grieveth not his neighbor. He sateth not himself with luxuries. He erreth not in the uplifting of the eyes. For Ahaya is his portion. The good inclination receiveth not glory nor dishonor from men, and it knoweth not any guile or lie or fighting or reviling. For Ahaya dwelleth in him and lighteth up his soul, and he rejoiceth towards all men always. The good mind hath not two tongues of blessing and of cursing, or of contumely and of honor, of sorrow and of joy, of quietness and of confusion, of hypocrisy and of truth, of poverty and of wealth, but he hath one disposition, uncorrupt and pure, concerning all men, he hath no double sight or double hearing, for in everything which he doeth, or speaketh, or seeth, he knoweth that Ahiah looketh on his soul. And he cleanseth his mind that he may not be condemned by men as well as by Allah. And in like manner the works of Belia are twofold, and there is no singleness in them. This admonition from Benjamin is good for understanding how to be a good man of a good mind. Now, continuing in the Testament of Asher, chapter 4, verse 4. Another desireth not to see a good day with them that riot, lest he defile his body and pollute his soul. This too is double-faced, but the whole is good. I'm going to actually read the scripture to describe what rioting is so we can understand what is being said here better first peter chapter 4 verse 3 and 4 it says for the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the gentiles when we walked in lasciviousness lust excess of wine revelings banquetings and abominable idolatries wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you what Asher was referring to here in chapter 4. The riot was referring to the partying of the world, wherein the soul and body is defiled in fornication. And they actually considered a good day. That's why Peter said, wherein they think it strange that you run not with into the same excess of riot and speak evil of you. This is where the double face are going to speak evil of you for not partaking. Yet, the whole of your action is good because you're actually doing it what's right in the sight of Allah Hayyam. as opposed to being a respecter of persons and doing what seems good to everyone else and defiling yourselves so Asher is really helping his children weigh things rightly in any situation so that they be not given over to Belier now he's using the law to understand the good inclination for those who do that which is good as a whole not just in seeming good he says in Asher chapter 4 verse 5 for such men are like to stags and to hinds because in the manner of wild animals they seem to be unclean but they are altogether clean 
Because they walk in zeal for Ahaya, and abstain from what Allahayam also hateth, and forbiddeth by his commandments, warding off the evil from the good. This is key. Zeal for Ahaya, to abstain from what Ahaya also hateth and forbiddeth, will ward off the evil. That will always keep you in walking uprightly, as your father said, he will teach you what's upright in the sight of Allahayam. Continuing in chapter 5. Ye see, my children, how that there are two in all things, one against the other, and one is hidden by the other. In wealth is hidden covetousness, in conviviality drunkenness. Conviviality is the quality of being friendly and lively. In laughter, grief, and in wedlock, profligacy. Profligacy means licentious or dissolute behavior. The word licentious means promiscuous and unprincipled in intimate matters. So wedlock covers that because the marriage bed is undefiled according to Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Death succeedeth to life, honor to glory, night to day, and darkness to light. And all things are under the day, just things under life, unjust things under death. Wherefore also eternal life also awaited death. Nor may it be said that truth is a lie nor right wrong for all truth is under the light even as all things under Allah I am. there is an opposite to everything Sir Asher has to choose the things of the good inclination of the angel of peace and not the opposite spectrum of the angel of darkness all these things therefore I proved in my life and I wandered not from the truth of Ahaya, and I searched out the commandments of the Most High walking according to all my strength with singleness of face unto that which is good. So this is also how you are to approach your life to overcome. Continuing. Chapter 6 of Testament of Asher. Take heed therefore, ye also, my children, to the commandments of Ahaya, following the truth with singleness of face. For they that are double-faced are guilty of twofold sin. For they both do the evil thing, and they have pleasure in them that do it following the example of the spirit of deceit and striving against mankind. That's the reason you don't want to stay in the double face and should turn unto taking heed to the commandments and following truth with singleness, being inclined unto the good only. Asher's children not only struggle with two-facedness, but they have an affinity to sinners like themselves and they are inclined to work evil together with them against others like the spirits of deceit. The evil spirits work together against men. Hence, Asher's children, they work together to the destruction of others. Through the robbing, stealing, killing, adultery, and fornication that's going on among the children of Asher through their lifestyle choices. You have an ascension of Isaiah chapter 7 verse 9 to 12 and chapter 10 verse 29. It tells how the evil spirits are in the firmament and they're just fighting amongst each other. Hence, you find among Asha, they're destroying each other today. In the scriptures, we can see that shows evil spirits are in place, seeing how they operate to further understand how Asha's children fall into this following that example. In the Testament of Reuben, chapter 2, verse 2 through 9, to understand the spirits of deceit. Besides all these, there is an eighth spirit of sleep, which is brought about the trance of nature and the image of death. With these spirits are mingled the spirits of error. Now we're going into the seven spirits of deceit, so we can understand by precept. The spirits of deceit, the children of Asher are operating in. First, the spirit of fornication is seated in the nature and in the senses. The second, the spirit of insatiableness in the belly. Third, the spirit of fighting in the liver and gall. The fourth, the spirit of obsequiousness and chicanery, that through officious attention one may be fair in seeming. The fifth is the spirit of pride, that one may be boastful and arrogant. The sixth is the spirit of lying, in perdition and jealousy to practice deceits and concealments from kindred and friends. The seventh, is the spirit of injustice, with which are thefts and acts of rapacity, that a man may fulfill the desire of his heart, 
for injustice work it together with the other spirits by the taking of gifts so you can see how these spirits work together and is leading the children of Asher astray this helps see how things are so bad down in the area where Asher's children are and for Asher's children around the world and of course we know there's bribes being taken because it said uh, for injustice work it together with the other spirits by the taking of gifts so you'll find the government and the authorities down there many are taking gifts and unjust unfortunately and with all these the spirit of sleep is joined which is that of error and fantasy and so perisheth every young man darkening his mind from the truth and not understanding the law of Allah Hayyam, nor obeying the admonition of his fathers as befell me also in my youth so you can see how these spirits work against the children of Asha. They gang up on them. These spirits attack them in their youth, so they'll get involved with these gangs or get into that lifestyle, loving those that are working evil and doing evil to seek to please them, and then running in that world for so long, they end up living lives of crime. So it's... Uh, real important for the children of Asha not to be given over to the spirits of deceit nor any evil spirit continuing in testament of Asha chapter 6 verse 3 he goes on to admonish his children do ye therefore my children keep the law of Ahaya and give not heed unto evil as unto good but look unto the thing that is really good and keep it in all commandments of Ahaya, having your conversation therein and resting therein. Remember, your thing is to discern what's truly good. You don't go for what seems or what might be. Go for what's really good and keep it. And that's going to keep you in the commandments. And have your conversation therein, which is your manner of life. And rest there. That's your comfort. Resting in the word of Allah Hayyam. And you know Yahshua's rest from Matthew 11, 28 to 30, the meekness and lowliness of heart. Your father has more admonitions for you here. He says, For the latter ends of men do show their righteousness or unrighteousness when they meet the angel of Ahaya and of Satan. For when the soul departs troubled, it is troubled by the evil spirit, which also it served in lust and evil works. There we see, He's letting you know what happens if you do not take heed to the good inclination, but walk in the evil one, doing some good and some evil. It goes on to say, But if he is peaceful, with joy he meeteth the angel of peace, and he leadeth him into eternal life. You can also corroborate that what Asher is speaking of is true, according to the Apocalypse of Paul, chapter 14 and 15. Thank you, Brother Johnny, for the comment. Chapter 7 Become not my children as Sodom, which sinned against the angels of Ahaya and perished forever. Children of Asha fall into the sins of Sodom, being burned in their lusts, which is known today as homosexuality. And their women fall into fornication, adorning their heads and faces to deceive the mind, to entice men that are not their husbands into fornication just as the women did unto the angels before the flood, according to the testament of Reuben. He goes on to say in chapter 7, verse 2, For I know that ye shall sin, and be delivered into the hands of your enemies, and your land shall be made desolate, and your holy places destroyed, and ye shall be scattered unto the four corners of the earth, and you shall be set at naught in the dispersion, vanishing away as water. This lets us know, children of Asha, you can find them around the world. Asha said, you shall be set at naught in the dispersion, vanishing away as water. Asha's children are dying off in the dispersion as vanishing water. Being led by the spirits of deceit and the evil inclination is causing them to be divided and separated as water, which the earth eats up and causes to vanish, as Zebulon explained. Uh, in Testament of Zebulon, chapter 9, verse 1 to 5. Observe therefore the waters, and know when they flow together, they sweep along stones and trees, earth 
and other things. But if they are divided into many streams, the earth swalloweth them up, and they vanish away. So shall ye also be, if ye be divided. Be not ye therefore divided into two heads. And as your father Ash is talking about, don't be of two faces. For everything which Ahiah hath made hath but one head, two shoulders, two hands, two feet, and all the remaining members. So it's important for Asha to be one head, single face. Going back to the Testament of Asha now, chapter 7, verse 3. And ye shall be set at naught in the dispersion, vanishing away as water, until the Most High shall visit the earth, coming himself as a man, with men eating and drinking, and breaking the head of the dragon in the water. He shall save Israel and all the Gentiles, Allah speaking in the person of man. Therefore do ye also, my children, tell these things to your children, that they disobey him not. Ash understood that his children needed Yahshua to be able to hearken and obey his voice. He goes on to say, For I have known that ye shall assuredly be disobedient, and assuredly act unholy, not giving heed to the law of Allah Hayyam, but to the commandments of men being corrupted through wickedness. Through wickedness the children of Asher are unholy, being disobedient to the law of Allah Hayyam, and the gospel of Christ, following after pagan religions or false doctrines after the commandments of men, to help understand how false doctrines are also part of the idolatry or hearkening to idols, First Timothy 4 and 1. This is why you can find the Catholic religion so prevalent among them. The Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Knowing the struggle that you're facing, Asher, you have to be very mindful to avoid the commandments of men because they actually come from seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So hopefully that helps to avoid that. Continuing here verse 6 of chapter 7 and therefore shall ye be scattered as gad and dan my brethren and ye shall not know your land tribe and tongue so those three tribes will not really know who they are according to the testimonies but ahaya will gather you together in faith through his tender mercy and for the sake of abraham isaac and jacob he knows that there will be a remnant that blessing, he will be blessed with children. And so it's a focus for you all within to really weigh things righteously in your heart and in your mind so that you do not fall to the struggle that you face by hearkening to idols. In respect of persons, men pleasing and two-facedness. All right, and finishing out the, what Asher said in chapter eight, and when he had said these things unto them, he commanded them, saying, Bury me in Hebron. And he fell asleep and died at a good old age. And his sons did as he commanded them, and they carried him up to Hebron and buried him with his fathers. So that's the tribe of Asher. I hope this is edifying for you all, children of Asher, and also for those who are struggling with the same things. So, because we all can learn something from each of the tribes and the things they face because the admonitions these are admonitions from the spirit so that it can help us all hope you all enjoy the lesson we look forward to hearing from you all and chat with the chalam to everyone on the chat all right chat with the chalam